Start transmission. Greetings Earthlings. My name is Krill, and I am the leader of the Remardian Grace. We hail from a sector in the universe you call Zeta Reticuli, a binary constellation 39 light years or 12 parsecs from the planet you call Earth. We are organic sentient android robots, or what you would call extraterrestrial biological entities, created by a group of highly advanced melanated beings who hail from the 8th planet in the 19th galaxy. My preferred method of communication is mind to mind using telepathy, but so as not to alarm you, I have conceded to communicate this message using this archaic form of communication called verbal speech. I am transmitting to inform you that around the Earth date of August 12, 2013, the biorhythm and magnetic fields of the planet you call Earth will peak, and a vortex will open which will allow us to travel to the galaxy in which you reside, and revisit the planet you call Earth, as we have been doing every 10 years since the Earth year of 1943. When we last visited the planet you call Earth on the Earth date of August 14, 2003, our arrival caused a great blackout and widespread power outage in the northeastern and midwestern United States and in Ontario, Canada. Now that the vortex has reopened in this Earth year of 2013, we are on our way again to see who is ready for the great trip. This is what happens with a vortex and principles of time. Your time warp started in the Earth year of 1943 with the Philadelphia Experiment. Prior to the Philadelphia Experiment, the vortex would naturally open every 10 years from 1920, 1930, 1940, and so on. However, the Philadelphia experiment caused the vortex to open up prematurely in 1943, and we were pulled into this dimension by the magnetic pull from the generators that supplied the energy for the Philadelphia experiment. We gave the scientists of your planet the designs to create the Large Hadron Collider, which was supposed to be used to reset the occurrence of the vortex to its natural date of Earth year 2010. However, the scientists of Earth deviated from the plans that we gave them, and altered the design of the Large Hadron Collider, which turned it into a time machine pulling a traveling man named Eloy Cole back through time from the future. All of these events are influencing and altering your timeline and the universal space-time continuum. Well, since I have gotten this far in explaining some things to you, I might as well turn to my favorite subject of all, gravitational propulsion. The fundamentals of gravitational propulsion can be observed while working on electrical motors and generators when a small electromotive force can be produced by the spinning metal parts with the negative toward the outside, and the positive toward the rotational axis. A small electromotive force can be measured on a conventional meter from rotating slip rings. When the rings spin freely, free electrons in the metal will spin out by centrifugal force being produced by the static field in the metal. A generator can then be built on this principle consisting of a segmented rotor disc passing through electromagnets at its periphery. The electromagnets should be energized from the rotor to boost the electromotive force. This device will produce the expected electrical power, but at an unexpectedly high potential. At relatively low armature speeds, a potential will be produced capable of causing static effects on nearby objects while still speeding up, the generator will lift and rise to a height of 50 feet above the ground, breaking the union between itself and the engine. It will stay at this point for a while, still speeding up and surrounding itself with a pink glow indicating the ionization of air at a much reduced pressure, and eventually the whole generator will finally accelerate at a fantastic rate and take off into space. This is the simple principle of how flying saucer crafts which operate on gravitational propulsion are made. Once the machine has passed a certain threshold of potential voltage, the energy output exceeds the input. The energy output seems to be virtually limitless. The generator and attached parts become inertia-free. Analyzing what is happening is fairly easy. What the generator is doing is placing a stress on the ambient space around it. The space breaks down to provide the magnetism to relieve the stress, but the energy byproduct is absorbed by the generator, which reinforces the field. It should be noted at this point that only a very small amount of space fabric passes through the craft, and an even smaller amount is converted for energy. However, I have noticed that small changes in etheric forces lead to large physical effects. Rather simple right? Well, that is all for now. I will be transmitting again soon as we travel through the vortex on our approach to the planet you call Earth. This is Krill signing off, until next time. End transmission.